I am filthy. Seriously, I have not made this much mess in the workshop for a long time. This episode is a dirty one. Anyway, before we get into it, we have probably one of the biggest giveaways we've done in a while. We are giving away a brand new Harrop e-locker and one of their breather kits and a merchandise pack from Harrop and and we're gonna throw in a pack from Built Not Board as well. So that is a huge package. We've got the lock of the breathers, the two merch packs. Um, to enter, it's super easy. Make sure you are subscribed to the Harrop Engineering YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to Built Not Bought. Click down below. And I want you to drop a comment down below and let me know what your favorite part of the 80 series build is. Let me know in the comments. And no, you're not gonna get extra entries if you say the lockers are the best bit. Anyway guys, the winner of this uh, giveaway will be announced in the next Built Not Bought episode on the 80 series. Um, but if you're in the market for a locker anyway, they're running a promotion at the moment. Um, if you want to save $100 off an e-locker, use the code BNB. So jump over to Harrop. If you're about to grab a locker, now's the time to get it. Save that money, use that code BNB, and then drop that comment down below to enter the giveaway to win your own Harrop e-locker. Right, let's see how filthy we get this episode. Oh man, that's a long way off. Alrighty, so the bit that everyone's been waiting for, and to be honest, I've been waiting for this as well, because I haven't really thought about how I'm going to do this, but the front end of the car, the plan is to just get stuck in and start doing it. <laughs> so obviously we've got the light there, and this is the guard. So I think the plan is, what I've got, is a little bit of cardboard, or just card actually from, I don't know, the good old reject shop. And we'll sort of put it up against the guard, work out where it's gonna sit on the body, and basically trace around the board first and shape it how it's gonna to have to sit, and then start cutting the guard. So the guard can actually fit on with the headlight. And now to get the width, um, I managed to find some flares from a company called um, Fiberglass Replacement Flares, I think they're FRP, Fiberglass Replacement Parts. Now they're in Brisbane, and um, these are actually really, really kind of on the money for what I wanted. Like they're the perfect width to fit the tire, and um, let's be honest, everyone's like, why don't you just go the cut snake flares? But <laughs> I don't like the look of them. Well, for my application anyway, because I want this to be kind of molded and, and kind of blended into the card as one piece. So once we've got that uh, fender sorted, then we can put this flare on and trim that back so that all shaped and fit. Um, and then we'll move on to the next stage. So there's a few different steps in this process, cutting and then cutting that bit, getting that mounted. And then over here, now for a while, you've probably seen in the background, I've had some um, shaping foam, which I got from Bunnings. But last minute research, um, when I started getting the fiberglass resin and all that kind of stuff, the activator will actually melt the polystyrene because that shaping foam is polystyrene. Um, I found out if you get polyurethane foam, it won't actually um, melt when it hits, hits that resin. So this is a expandy foam, which I didn't want to use in the first place, but it is kind of the only one you can get that's polyurethane. So once we've got all the parts on there and we start wanting to shape and fill gaps, we'll use this foam. And then over the top of that, you can start laying your fiberglass matting um, and then put all your resin in and start building it up from there. So that's a bit down the track. There's a bit of work to do before we get into that. So what we're gonna do now, get that guard on in place, start marking it out, cutting it so it actually fits on the car with a headlight. And then we'll start looking at those flares and see how we go from there. Oh, we've got Mitch here. <laughs> so this is kind of a two man job. So we need a couple of hands here so we can actually hold the thing up and then mark it out. It's gonna be a bit of juggling, but yeah. we'll see how we go. This is the moment of truth. We've marked it out with the most rough cut you've ever seen and we've gone very conservative and we've left a bit of material on the guard. So we'll trim this out and then it's a case of just putting the headlight on and off and then slowly trimming it back until where it fits good and just go from there. But I don't know, you can't sit here and think about it for the rest of your life. Just gotta get into it. That is the not the not straightest line I've ever seen in my life. Is that your work? Oh yeah! 
Looks good to me. All right, the plan now, the plan now is to test fit the light on and off until it looks good. And then who knows from there, I mean, bit of pinch weld, bit of primer should be all right. <laughs> Like Me. How much are those headlights worth? I don't know, like 800 bucks each, I think. Oh, I scratched it. Not here to f spiders. You know, all of this can buff out. It yeah, should buff out. Look at that, brand new. All right, progress is being made. We've done probably two or three extra cuts. Um, we've actually discovered that the light's gonna sit out a little bit more, which is kind of good, so we can build it up with that flare. But that's sitting in, eh? Pretty much. With a bar I've got coming, which I'll let you guys know about later, it'll cover a lot of this bottom section. So that's gonna work out good. Um, the plan now, fuck, <laughs> what is the plan? <laughs> so the plan now, there's a couple more bits I wanna trim. Um, and then we'll try and sit this flare on and then see where that's got to go and where that's got to be cut. Um, pretty much with the flare, we can have the headlight off and cut it back to this point on the guard here. And then that should clear the rest of it. And then it's just a case of building up. We'll start playing with that Aspandy foam and um, shaping from there. Dude, I'm actually super impressed with these flares, eh? Okay. <laughs> How's that? They'll definitely fit. That is like bang on, eh? Not even cop bait. So we'll, on, we'll, trim, we'll trim this literally just straight down because we need to give it clearance for the headlight. All this will go in the bin because that bull bar is gonna come around here anyway. Then we'll have a gap there. We'll mount the flare, which we're gonna use just a bunch of sicker and glue and just like stick it on. And then I wanted to build this up more. So basically from this section here to that crease there, we're gonna build it up. And then that'll give us enough of a bulkiness to really come into that headlight and shape around it. If you see my vision. I'm like a wizard over here, just like, I can see it happening. <laughs> All right, so we need a white marker because this is black. Oh, amazing. Wow, oh, it works really good. <laughs> What's wrong with this pen? Well, oh, it's, it's going the way it needs to go. There we go. We'll just do, it just knows what it wants. I'm just gonna cut like that and then we can shape it when the headlight's on. Yeah, look at that, brand new. <laughs> Literally, cars held together with liquid nails. You can call me a chippy, eh? there you go. Um, anyway, doesn't look amazing, but all this is gonna get hidden. We've just bonded it with something as strong as we can. Oh no, we can punch some in there. Try and feed it through that bit there. I'm actually being hell excited about using this expandy phone. So I was like, there's this polystyrene over there, but I'm like, that's just gonna be a big headache. How to make it fit the shape of the car and then trim it back with this stuff will just grow into any position you want, so. So the good news is, well, it's actually bad news because by the time you're watching this, it would have already been done, but there's always internet experts out there. So if you are a panel beater, comment down below how you would have done this. I'm sure there's way better ways to do this, but we're just playing with different like foams and glues and bits and pieces and fiberglassing and metal filler and all sorts of stuff. To make it happen, it'll look good in the end. That's all I'm worried about. Shake it vigorously for 60 seconds. Screw the applicator nozzle onto the cap. Invert can. Fill 40% because it grows by three. Damn. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it says it takes five hours to cure. All right, it takes five hours to cure, so we'll try and get some of this on tonight, but it's gonna to have to be a tomorrow job to actually start shaping it. Bummer. So the rear, we've got a set of flares now. The problem is obviously I've welded in the back door, but every 80 on the planet, two piece because it has a rear door. So I spoke to the guys down at the flare place and said, oh, is there any for like dual cabs or utes? But there's nothing really on the market that follows that same flare shape. So we had to go with the two piece, uh, which isn't so bad. I mean, just to pump some of that expanded foam in the middle here and we'll kind of join it with the fiberglass filler over the top and it's all good. 
Um, so we'll pretty much do the same thing, mark it out, we'll prep it, sand it, get it ready, clean it up, run some bonding glue, some liquid nails, whatever, and get this set on there. Because it's not a guard we can take off, it's gonna have to be a, a set and like, not forget, I was gonna say set and forget, but we're gonna have to tape it up and have something to hold it overnight and then deal with this front piece, which doesn't fit amazing because that, that door situation is a bit different. Anyway, we'll get stuck in and just make it work as usual. Well, I woke up the next morning and it was horrible. The thing was all fluffy. The density was not consistent. So I decided to turf the whole thing and find some proper polyurethane foam. So in the meantime, I hooked into the rear flare, got that thing sorted while we waited for that phone to arrive. I've secured the bag, I've secured the bag. This is polyurethane foam, finally. Some legends out, I think it was called Rigitech foam products or something. Let me have this little off cut here um, and this stuff will be able to handle the resin of the fiberglassing. So we've turfed the expanding foam because that was crap, obviously. I'm gonna try and shape this similar to that shape, glue it on there and then we can start really shaping it back. But before we get into that, let's go to this week's tech tip. Hello guys, and welcome to this week's tech tip video. You may have realized I've moved into a bigger workshop. That's right, I sell tires. No, I'm just joking, I'm not. You've probably worked out what this week's tech tip is about, and that is tires. There's a ton of videos out there online about what different tires do, mud train, all train, street tires, whatnot. So I thought I'd have my little input to that as well and take you through the range of tires right from the all terrains up to the mud terrain. So let's get straight into it. We ain't wasting any time with this one. We're starting off talking about their all terrain tire. So their all terrain tire, these are a 10 ply. Um, they're basically designed for majority street driving, but then if you go off road as well, we sort of say 80% road and then 20 percent off road. So they're really good on road characteristics, plenty of grip, um, but you can take them off road. And they've got that sort of lug design so you can get a bit of traction when you're doing dirt, gravel, stuff like that. So real good all round tire if you're doing a bit of off-roading that weekend warrior type of stuff. Righto, the next tire we're gonna talk about is their Rugged Terrain. Now, I've actually been using these on the 80 series for that budget build that we did, and they were an awesome tire. This is where you start into a bit more off-road stuff. Awesome on the sand, awesome on gravel and dirt as well. Um, not so much mud stuff, but in saying that, I do have a shot of me boosting up a mud hill in these, with these tires on, and they did absolutely fine. I've got the complete back, Black Bear crew behind the cameras laughing at me. <laughs> you want to come and do it. Talking about the Rugged Terrains, they've actually just come out with the Rugged Terrain Plus. Now, it's essentially the same tire, but it's a lot quieter on-road. And now, how's this tire come about? That is because of the feedback of the people that use them. So, Black Bear will actually listen to their customers, and a lot of feedback has come back from different tires, and they can actually change the design. Quiet tire with those pluses, and they'll get you plenty of off-road traction as well. My lovely assistant. <laughs> Righty, the next tire is the Mark Maher tire. Now these are still built by Black Bear. Mark Maher is actually the owner of Black Bear tires. Now, this is their first attempt at sort of a hybrid tire. Now, what do I mean by hybrid? I mean, the center line of the tread there is sort of designed for that street driving where you spend most of your time just high pressures um, for that road condition of plenty of grip. But once you start getting to the edge of the tire and the side wall, you start getting all of those side biters and bits and pieces. So when you do put your pressures down, you start getting all of that traction. So this is what I'm gonna be running on the 80 series. Obviously that thing's not running yet, but I'm really excited to try these. Um, now, they actually make this type of tire as well for those really heavy trucks. They do up to a 12 ply, which take about, I think it's 1,950 kilos. Did I say that right? 1,950 kilos, yeah, almost two ton per tire. So they're really strong sidewall, but they obviously make them for just four drives as well with not so much load rating. Alrighty, the last tire we're gonna talk about, probably everyone's favorite if you're a true off-roader, and that is their Mud Terrain tire. I've been running these on the patrol for a couple of years now, and they are exactly what they say, they're their mud tire design. Now, I will say for a mud tire, these have really good on-road capabilities in the wet. One thing I notice, if you lock up your tires in the wet with a set of muddies, you're probably gonna go sliding, but I was pretty surprised with these. Um, they did have plenty of grip, which is really awesome. The mud terrains will come the larger size as well. They do make up to a 40 inch tire on a 20 inch rim. And I have heard they're going up to 42s as well. So if you want those large tires, these are the ones to go for. So just as a bit of a summary, obviously all these tires are designed for different different applications, depending on how much forward driving you're doing and where you're taking your vehicle, how heavy it is, whether you're on the road, in the wet, even where you live in Australia, different states have different sort of conditions. So definitely check out the range of Black Bear tires. Now I have, News coming in, there is a giveaway happening. What is it? I actually don't know, tell me the details. <laughs> From the months of August through to the end of September, if you are in the market for a set of tires, if you buy four or more tires, 
anything from the Black Bear range, including the Mark Mars, you'll go into the running to win a trip to Fraser Island. Three days, two nights, ferries included, breakfast and accommodation for you and your partner. So it's two people or a mate, head over there. Anyway, enough of this. I'm gonna get back to building this 80 series. Go in the running and we'll see you there. I won't see you there, I won't be there, unless I win it. I'll go in the running. I will say from personal experience, they're the best for doing burnouts, they make a ton of smoke. No, I'm not gonna put that in. <laughs> or am I? Right, there is a lot of experimentation going on right now. Um, pretty tricky stuff shaping this. I've done the bulk of the shape. Um, now I just need to obviously keep playing with the front bit where the headlight is and just sort of work out how I'm gonna tail it off. The trickiest bit is the foam they gave me was an odd shape and there's a lot of cutting and bits and pieces. I'm trying to join bits in. It'd be good if I had a nice one big chunk and I can just make one shape of foam and move it, but I've had to kind of add bits and pieces in, which has made it a bit tricky, but I do want to play with a bit of the fiberglass here now to see if it'll kind of bridge those gaps there. So I'm going to get the resin mixed up um, and start putting the matting on there and basically build up the layers. Kind of want three or four layers of the matting. Resin, matting, resin, matting. Just keep adding it and building it up and hopefully it'll sort of bridge these gaps and I can blend it into that fiberglass flare that's already there and then maybe finish the bodywork with some of that metal tech filler or fiberglass filler as well. So let's just see how it goes. I'm really just curious to see how this stuff works. Once I'm happy with that section and I know it's gonna be good, then we can keep going on and put the time in to really shape it properly. It looks like fiberglass, so that is a good start. I've done sort of three-ish layers here and a couple back here so I can blend it into what's happening when I continue it on. But we'll let that set and see what happens, but pretty much what I expected, it kind of just soaks in. I should be able to bridge that top gap with some fiberglass filler, and then you just put a nice coating of bog on there to basically smooth off the texture of the fiberglass. Quite a rough finish, you can sort of see that. So I need to smooth it out um, so it's nice and shiny, ready for the final coat. But I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna continue on shaping on the front end and now I know that this fiberglass stuff is gonna work. Right, I'm pretty happy with the way the foam has been shaped with this at the moment. Um, sort of play with the front end with the headlight there, put it in and out a couple of times and trimmed it back. So I'm ready for the stage of actually doing the fiberglassing. So obviously we tried that a little bit earlier, but what I've basically done is cut up three sort of different sizes, small, medium, large kind of sheets. I'm gonna mix up a massive amount of the actual resin with the hardener. And basically you wanna lay on a first layer of resin onto all the foam and sort of let it soak in. But before it dries, get that first layer of fiberglass on there. Lay the resin again, another layer, lay the resin, get about three or four layers. Uh, I don't know how it's gonna go around all these bit different corners and bits and pieces, but we'll see how we go. Like it is, it's one just big experiment, but I'm pretty keen to get this whole thing properly glassed. So it's a bit more rigid, a little less fragile, and I can really start playing with it from there. All right, now sticking with the theme of, well, this is one big experiment. <laughs> I've actually done a small section in a uh, fiberglass filler and then done a small section in the metal tech filler. Now, they're kind of similar properties. I'm thinking obviously the fiberglass is gonna work better because it is fiberglass that we're going over the top of. And they pretty much behave the same, but I think the fiberglass is slightly more easier to sand and it actually spread a bit easier too. So logic tells you the fiberglass filler should be used on top of fiberglass. So we're gonna stick with that. The metal tech's really good for just making those edges nice and strong when we're joining things together to steel. So I might use that around the edges, but the bulk of the work's just gonna be in the fiberglass filler. So now, we're just whacking the hours. I'm gonna run a couple of time lapses. I'm just gonna coat this whole thing so I can really start smoothing it back and filling in all those little rough gaps that the actual fiberglass matting leaves behind.
Oh, this reminds me of the moment when I painted my engine bay. So this happened. Yeah, look, here's the story. Basically, last night we'd finish off that gunmetal gray look. Came back this morning and, uh, well, everything changed. It, it just, I came in, walked in, looked at it and gone, oh, what the hell have I done? So I did all the work, looked back at it and uh, still hated it. I just didn't like the shape. It looked like a growth off the side of the car. It was real bulgy and round. So I attacked it with the knife, got the grinder out, pretty much cut everything back and almost pretty much just started again. A huge section got cut out of it. And I've actually made it a lot more square now. So what I've done is actually got a bit of a body line. Before it was just a big rounded curve and you couldn't actually see any separation. But here I've put a bit of a body line which follows that same shape down the bottom. This top square I've sucked down a bit more. This is a lot more leveled. And then with this headlight, I kind of saw this bulge here at the front. So the bottom section of the guard kind of flares out like that. This top bit sort of sleeked back and I've actually done a bit of a triangulated cut through the back there. Just made a lot more sleek of a design. I think it looks a lot nicer. I'm glad I did it, spent a lot more time and just wasted a heap of material doing this, but the end result has made a lot more better. I would've just been looking at this car for the rest of my life and that would've just bugged me. So pretty much all I've got to do now is just finish off some little pinholes and bits and pieces with some fine bog. And then I wanna get some primer on it, some paint, and this is what she's gonna look like. <laughs> All right, guys, there is one massive job done. Well, that's half the job. I haven't even started the other side, which is gonna happen off camera. Um, but I just wanna say something quickly, guys, that I'm not gonna get a ton of comments about how I should have done it different and oh, it's full of bog and it's crap, blah, blah, blah. And to be honest, if this was my car, something I was building to last forever, 100% would have done it out of steel. Um, I would have got an English wheel, started rolling it and learned all those techniques, welding it up. Uh, but that just takes way too long. You guys gotta remember this car exists because of this YouTube channel. I mean, this is my job now. I've done the patrol. That thing took me 18 months to build. We're about six months with this, so it's way shorter. And you guys probably already know that filming an episode and filming a build like this, everything takes probably at least three times longer filming it as if, uh, rather than if I was doing it without filming. So I had to find that balance between doing it in a way that's not gonna to take too long to get the episodes out because I get a ton of you guys messaging me saying, hurry up, when's the next episode? So I need to keep things on schedule, uh, but just keep that in mind, food for thought. But in saying that, I will be making a mold out of this. I'm gonna do a full fiberglass mold and get it re-punched into another complete flare so there'll be no bog foam or anything because as soon as I lay this thing up against the wall and it's damaged, that's the end of it. So I need to make sure that that work is saved. Um, so yeah. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode and do remember we have that Harab giveaway so make sure you comment down below your favourite part of the 80 series to go in the competition. Make sure you subscribe to the Harab Engineering YouTube channel and Built Not Bought YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys in the next episode, hopefully not too far away. Please click the button to your left if you want to go and check out the latest merchandise we have on our website. If you missed last week's episode, click down below to see it and most importantly, on the far left, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.